allow enough, enough of us who are going to get mild illness to become immune to this, to help with the sort of whole population response, which would protect everybody. 60% is the sort of figure you need to get herd I mean, immunity. I mean, of course, we do face the prospect of, of as the Prime Minister said yesterday, of uh, an increasing number of people dying. That is a real prospect. This is a nasty disease. So as the rest of the world shut down their countries and isolate people and take children out of schools, etc., etc., the UK is trying a different approach. So Patrick says... He hoped the government's approach to tackling the virus would create a herd immunity in the UK. Now, you just heard that video. You just heard him say that. That requires 60% of the population to contract coronavirus. Essentially, what the government want is for this epidemic, this pandemic, to burn through the entire United Kingdom, infecting 60% and upwards of the UK population in order to acquire this herd immunity. But we don't even know, firstly, whether or not this immunity is going to work with this particular virus. We have no idea if it's going to be the case that once you become infected, you are then immune from that. So I don't understand the logic with that to start with. And that's why I've been wondering for the longest time, why is the UK not putting in measures to stop planes coming in, to ban public meetings with people? Why are they not doing anything like this? Well, essentially, here you have your answer. They want the public to be infected. They need 60% to be infected. And as far as I can tell, we are the only country in the world that is trying this approach. When every other country is placing their citizens in lockdown, the UK is saying, not to worry. We want you to socialize. We want you to get infected. We need you to get infected. Because once you get infected and 60% become infected, then we have somewhat of a herd immunity. This is their approach. But let's see what the figures say when we actually look into this 60% and how many people that would need to be infected to actually achieve their goal of herd immunity in the UK. Let's have a look, shall we? So currently in the UK, we have 67.78 million people. That's how many people live in the UK. So let's try and work out a percentage of 60% to see how many people need to get infected. Over here, we have 67.78 million. Let's divide this by 100 to get a 1%, and let's times that by 60. So to get 60% of the UK's population, we need to get 40 million people infected with coronavirus. That's how many people would need to get infected for the UK's measures to be effective, for this herd immunity to become real in their eyes, even though we don't know whether that's actually going to be the case, whether we are actually going to get herd immunity or not, 40 million, they are expecting to get infected. They want 40 million to become infected. So let's have a look at how many people are currently infected in the world right now, apparently using the statistics from worldometers.info. Coronavirus cases, 149,596, with deaths, 5,604, 73,716 recovered. So what we have here is we have the, the current statistics. Now then, let's have a look at the amount of active cases. So currently with the active cases, we have 64,590 who have a mild condition, and we have 5,686 which are serious or critical. Now, serious or critical means that you need intensive care. You have to have a bed, you have to have oxygen, and you have to have a nurse or doctor tending to your requirements, tending to your care. When we look at the closed cases, we have 79,000 people that have had a result from this virus. We have 73,719 who have been discharged and recovered, and we have 5,604 who have died. Now then, this is a percentage of recovered to death ratio of 7%. That means that 7% of all the cases that have had a result have resulted in death. 7%. You can't work out what the active cases are and what their effect are going to have on the closed cases because they're still either or. Either they're going to recover or either they're going to die. How So when you're trying to figure out what the actual uh, percentage or the mortality rate is going to be, you have to base this upon these figures on the right here, which is the recovered versus the deaths. And unfortunately, that says a 7% death rate. When we look at the active cases, we do actually see uh, a correlation. We have 8% which are still in serious or critical. 
around a week ago, the coronavirus mortality rate, as by the WHO, the World Health Organization, stated that there was a 3.4% mortality rate. That was their assumptions and that was their workings out, their calculations, based upon the actual number of infected versus the people that had died. But still, 3.4% is very high when you consider that seasonal flu is far, far, far less. This report in The Guardian uh, states that from the World Health Organization has estimated the mortality rate from COVID-19 is about 3.4%, basically backing up exactly what I've just said before. And that this is higher than seasonal flu, again, exactly what I've said. But essentially, on the, good, the plus point, 96% of the people who become infected will recover, which means that 3.4% will die. However, fear not, because experts say that in reality, the mortality rate is likely to be nearer to 1% or less. In other words, more than 99% of those become infected are expected to survive. Now, this is what apparently the experts say. Never mind the statistics, this is what the experts are going to say, that it's going to be nearer to 1% of people that are going to die. Okay, so bear this in mind. So now that we know that 40 million people need to be infected for the UK's policy and tactics to be effective in fighting coronavirus, we need to find out, okay, let's go with 1%. Let's see what 1% of 40 million people who become infected will be the death rate. So let's divide that by 100 and let's times that by 1. And here we have a mortality rate which the UK is quite prepared to accept based on just 1% because this is what the experts say. 406,000 people, 406,000 deaths if just 1% of the UK population die to coronavirus, if the UK has their way in allowing the virus to spread like wildfire through the entire UK infecting at least 60% of the population. What happens if we include the mortality rate as stated by the World Health Organization? So with 40 million infected, we will divide that by 100 and we are going to times that by 3.4. Now, this is the statistics that the World Health Organization say is the mortality rate of COVID-19. With 40 million people infected in the UK, we will get 1,382,000 deaths. Let that sink in. 1.3 million deaths in the UK, with which the government are quite happy to allow to transpire. Lastly, we need to work out what the closed cases, the actual figures about the recovered versus the deaths, the 7% would be if 7% of the UK's population who caught coronavirus actually died and 93% survived. From 40 million infected people, 60% of the UK's population, we are going to divide that by 100 and then we are going to times that by 7. The actual figures, if we allow 40 million people to become infected, is going to be 2,846,000 deaths. Let that sink in. The UK government is going to allow coronavirus to spread to 60% of the population, which based upon current figures of recovered versus deaths will lead to 2.8 million people dying here in the UK. This is just facts and figures. This is just policy that the UK government has put forth. Lastly, we just need to understand why this statistic will be so high. And it's very, very easy to understand why at least 7%, if not more, of the population who catch coronavirus will die. And this is the reason. Here we have the statistics for the critical care bed capacity in 2019 and 2020. Let's have a look up here. This goes back all the way to 2010. So the number of adult critical care beds in the UK. Let's scroll right down to January of this year and how many critical care beds here in the UK did we have? We had 4,123. That is how many beds we had here in the UK available for adult critical care. Next we need to understand what the percentage of these critical beds are actually being used and here we have it in this table here. So if we scroll down all the way again to January of this year we see that 83% of the 4,123 critical adult beds are currently occupied, which means we have vacancy for 17% of the 4,000 
123. When we work this figure out, we can see that we have 701 critical care adult beds available for use here in the UK, 701. Now then, looking at the statistics of the active cases and what percentage of that will need critical care, we are looking at 8%. So using 8% as a guideline, how many infected cases would we need to breach the 701 critical care beds here in the UK? Well, that's pretty simple. Here, when we divide 9,000 by 100 and times it by 8, we get 720. This means that 8% of 9,000 cases would lead to 720 cases needing critical care beds. That is the threshold. 9,000 is the threshold. As soon as we surpass 9,000, we then run into the situation where we have now run out of critical care beds. In other words, the patients that are going to require oxygen, round-the-clock care, nurses, doctors, that is the figure, 9,000. Once we breach that, that is the time that every other single person that comes in in a critical or a serious condition that needs treatment will not have a critical care bed to look after them. It's really that simple. And when we are talking about trying to infect 40 million people here in the UK, 40 million, the UK, the NHS, we cannot support those figures with the available beds that we have. It is an impossibility. We just cannot do that. And what's more, they want this to happen relatively quickly. That's why they've opened the doors. That's why they've left. The flights are open. You can still travel. The, the schools are still open. So when you read Sir Patrick's words here, who says he hoped the government's approach to tackling the virus would create a herd immunity in the UK, essentially what he's doing there is he is signing the death warrant of over 2 million UK citizens by allowing this approach of open door policy, rapid spread, 60% infected, leading to over 2 million deaths. Absolutely disgusting. This policy cannot work. There has to be a better way. Let's hope that this mentality, this reasoning is dismissed with very quickly. This cannot be allowed to stand. This is impossible. You cannot tell me that they haven't run the figures and understand this. This is not the way. There must be a better way. Allow enough, enough of us who are going to get mild illness to become immune to this, to help with the sort of whole population response, which would protect everybody. 60% is the sort of figure you need to get herd I mean, immunity. I mean, of course, we do face the prospect of, of as the Prime Minister said yesterday, of uh, an increasing number of people dying. That is a real prospect. This is a nasty disease.